Hello everyone, welcome to the class on angina pectoris series part 5. In this class, I am going to explain about antiplatelet agents, antithrombotic agents and other antianginal agents. Till now, we have covered all this topic. In lecture 1, I have discussed about pathophysiology of angina and drug classes used to treat that condition. In second lecture, I have covered surgical intervention procedures like coronary artery bypass surgery, stunt deployment. Along with that, I have discussed about nitrovasodilators. In the third lecture, I have covered about beta blockers. In this lecture, beta blockers pharmacology as well as medicinal chemistry aspects also discussed. Medicinal chemistry aspects like structure, SCR, synthesis also included in that lecture. In fourth video part, calcium channel blockers are discussed. Similar to this beta blockers, calcium channel blockers pharmacology as well as medicinal chemistry of calcium channel blockers also discussed. This will be the last part in angina pectoris series. And the next video will be about question and answers related to this angina pectoris series. Now let us see about antiplatelet agents first. Now antiplatelets plays a major role in hemostasis. Look at this word hemostasis, heme and stasis. It is nothing but prevention of blood loss. Whenever a blood vessel injury occurs, there is a chance for bleeding or blood loss and that is arrested by a process called as hemostasis. It involves two major processes. One of the process is known as platelet plug formation and the next process will be formation of fibrin clot. Platelet plug process starts and all the platelets will get aggregate. Simultaneously, a coagulation process is initiated which will form fibrin. What happens in this process is all the platelets will loosely form a kind of structure known as platelet plug. Now fibrin will try to integrate all these platelet cells and tie them together and so that it results in a stronger clot formation or thrombus formation. We will see the process in detail. Now first we need to understand the physiology of a blood vessel. Now look at this process. Now this is the lumen of blood vessel and these are endothelial cells. Underneath you have subendothelial layer is there which contains collagen and this part is smooth muscle cells. Now when there is an intact endothelium that means without any injury to this endothelium, endothelial cells will be releasing prostacycline. Prostacycline prevents platelet adhesion. This happens in intact endothelium. Whenever there is an injury or rupture to this blood vessel, the process changes. What happens is the injured blood vessel exposes collagen collagen and another factor known as von Willebrand factor. So whenever this basement membrane of endothelial cell is injured, it exposes collagen and von Willebrand factor to blood circulation. So platelets will be normally roaming in this blood circulation. When this collagen and von Willebrand factor is exposed, they come and attaches to this collagen as well as von Willebrand factor. This process is called as platelet addition. Now once attached, the activation of platelet cell occurs and they release certain factors. The factors like thromboxin A2 and AT ADP are released. This process is called platelet activation and secretion of platelet factors. Now there is a purpose for these factors. They cause a process called as chemotaxis. Chemo means chemicals, taxis means movements. What happens with this is once these factors are released, they will call all the platelets to this injured site. So wherever the injury is there, all the platelets will accumulate here. That process is called attraction of more platelet cells to that injured site. Now once this happens, all these platelets will come together and further activation occurs. And that activation results in deployment of GP2B3A receptor activation. There is a special type of receptor present on the surface of a platelet and this receptor will get activated and that results in aggregation of platelet plug. Now this receptor plays a major part in fibrin attachment. We will see in a while. Now this is the a block diagram of how platelets activation occurs. It all starts with a plaque rupture. So whenever there is a blood vessel injury, a plaque is formed. When it is ruptured, it exposes collagen as well as von Willebrand factor. And platelets will get attaches and secretion of factors occurs. Secretion means 
thromboxane A2 and ADP will get released. Once they are released, they cause chemotaxis, which is known as platelet recruitment and activation. That activation results in expression of GP2B3A receptors and finally platelet aggregation occurs. Simultaneously, there is something called as tissue factor. Because of exposure of this tissue factor, thrombin generation occurs. And this thrombin generation finally results in the formation of fibrin. And this fibrin along with platelet forms clot or thrombus. Now let us see how this GP2B3A activation occurs. Now this is a, a diagram about activated platelet. So this is an activated platelet wherein on the surface you have GP2B3A receptors are there. Now this is an unstimulated platelet wherein GP2B3A receptor conformation will be like this. When they are stimulated the conformation changes to this form. The change in shape or conformation results and enables their attachment with fibrin, fibrinogen as well as von Willebrand factor. So the stimulated GP2B3A receptors can bind with von Willebrand factor as well as with fibrin. So what is the significance of this? If this is an injured blood vessel, at this injury site, von Willebrand factor will be there and platelet can bind with this factor as well as platelet can also bind with another platelet another platelet with the help of fibrin. So what is happening at the injured site, a platelet gets anchored because of this binding and to that side all the platelets will come and ag aggregate because of fibrins. So GP2B3 receptors are very important thing to, act, to cause platelet aggregation and formation of clot. Now this is about antiplatelet drugs. Now, See, this process we have seen platelet disruption, collagen, tissue factor activation and finally results in aggregation. Now, uh, the platelet addition and secretion results in the formation of thromboxane A2 and ADP. Now, thromboxane A2 is formed with the help of an enzyme cyclooxygenase cause. This enzyme is inhibited by aspirin. You know, aspirin irreversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase enzyme. So that inhibits the formation of thromboxane A2 and further activation will not occur. So aspirin forms a major antiplatelet drug. Usually it is given in the dose of 75 to 150 mg. Most of the cardiac patients will take these drugs to prevent platelet aggregation. If you remember, platelet aggregation is the major reason for the, for the condition called unstable angina. The platelet aggregation may completely block blood vessel and, and may result in myocardial infarction, heart attack. Now the next class, ADP will be acting on receptors known as P2 Y12 receptors. These receptors are G protein coupled receptors which are present on platelet cells. ADP binds with that and activation occurs. Now these receptors are blocked by these classes of drugs. You have two classes are there. Teclopidine, clopidogrel, prosugrel will inhibit irreversibly these receptors. So receptors will get irreversibly inhibited whereas cangrelar, ticagrelar block the receptors reversibly. Now this uh, reversible inhibition is important. Uh, irreversible inhibition plays a major role because the receptors, are, receptors or this enzyme is completely lost because of irreversible inhibition. That may result in profuse bleeding. So the major side effect of all these antiplatelet agent is bleeding. So irreversible agent may cause profuse bleeding whereas reversible reasons are somewhat safer one. Now the next one, next class of drug is GP2B3A receptor activation and this activation is inhibited with the help of these drugs. The drugs are abciximab, aptifibate, and tirofibate. See abciximab is again an irreversible inhibitor of GP2B3A receptor activation. See this diagram. These receptors, when, when these drugs, these class of drugs are used, the receptors are completely blocked with the drugs. When the receptors are blocked, platelet could not bind with one Willebrand factor as well as other platelets. That results, that blocks platelet aggregation. Absipsimab, you can see this, it is a monoclonal antibody. Again, it is irreversible one, the remaining two are reversible inhibitors. Along with that, tissue factor activation occurs which results in the formation of thrombin. And these thrombin receptors are blocked by Vorapaxel. So this, a kind of anticoagulant drug. Anticoagulant drug. Further anticoagulant or antithrombotic drugs are Two classes are there, heparin, enoxaparin, fondoparnex. All these drugs 
will activate a protein called as antithrombin. As the name indicates, it inhibits thrombin activity. So when this antithrombin activity is increased, all these drugs will block coagulation process. And the other class is hiridin, lepiridin, and divalrudin. These are direct inhibitors of thrombin. So these classes can be classified as indirect thrombin inhibitors and direct thrombin inhibitors. All of them will block coagulation process. Hence, antithrombotics are also known as anticoagulants. You need to understand the distinction. Antiplatelets will be acting on platelet activity and block the platelet aggregation, whereas anticoagulants will block coagulation process, which is related to thrombin and the formation of fibrin. Now, the next one is other antianginal agents. These drugs are second line agents which are used to treat chronic angina. Now, the first drug is ranolazine. Now, ranolazine inhibits a type of receptor known as inward sodium channels in heart. Now, what happens is inside the heart when these channels are inhibited, sodium currents inside the cardiac cells goes down or reduces. Now, in the heart, there is a, a antiport known as sodium calcium exchanger. The job of this antiport is it takes away three of the sodium out of the cardiac cell and brings back calcium into cardiac cell. Now, three of the sodium is taken out of the cell and one calcium is taken inside the cell. So, this exchanger works when sodium ion concentration is more inside the cardiac cell. Ranolagen inhibits this particular channel which reduces sodium levels inside the heart and hence this exchanger could not work. If this is not working, calcium entry is reduced. If calcium entry is reduced, contraction is reduced and oxygen demand is reduced and this is how ranolazine works to treat angina pectoris. Now the next drug is nicorandel. Nicorandel releases nitric oxide as well as activates potassium ATP channel. This causes hyperpolarization and finally results in relaxation. So it causes relaxation by releasing nitric oxide as well as sorry, releasing nitric oxide as well as causing hyperpolarization. Now the advantage with Ricorandel is it reduces preload as well as afterload. Both of them will get reduced by Nicorandel. Now the next drug is Evabredine. Evabredine is a special type of drug which reduces cardiac pacemaker currents. When cardiac pacemaker current is reduced, heart rate is reduced. When heart rate is reduced, oxygen demand is reduced. When oxygen demand is reduced, you can treat angina pectoris. Now the final drug is trimetazidine. Trimetazidine inhibits an enzyme called thiolase. Inhibition of this enzyme results in inhibition of beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is a fatty oxidation process which releases ATP. When this process is inhibited, cardiac cell will rely on glycolysis to get ATP. Now, what happens with this is the utilization of oxygen is reduces if beta ox oxidation process uses a lot of oxygen, whereas glycolysis does not use oxygen. So, heart cells are calibrated such that oxygen demand is reduced with this drug. So, these are all other antianginal drugs.